This might be the coolest lineup of wines that I've done yet. People ask me all the time what my favorite wines are, and I don't really have a favorite. It kind of depends on my mood and what I'm eating and the time of year and all of that. But I will say that in my house, we drink a ton of sparkling wine and champagne. And I say sparkling wine and champagne because those aren't necessarily the same thing. All champagne is sparkling wine, but not all sparkling wine is champagne. It has to come from the region of Champagne, France, in order to have that name. That being said, champagne is a very popular style of, uh, of sparkling wine, and there's a lot of wines made around the world that emulate champagne, in part with the grapes and also in part with how it's made. Our Cooper's Hawk Luxe Sparkling is a great example of that. So with this wine, we're making it method champenoise, or method traditionnel, which means that we're making it in the style of champagne. It goes through two fermentations. The first fermentation is done in a tank, and then it goes into a bottle and goes through a second fermentation uh, where the wine is left with the yeast for an extended period of time. What this does is it gives the wine this really biscuity, yeasty, sort of toasty flavor that's really quintessential to champagne and, of course, to our Luxe Sparkling. The other thing that makes this like champagne is that uh, we're using champagne grapes. Uh, the grapes that they use for champagne are predominantly Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, uh, which is what this is made from. So this wine is really special, near and dear to my heart. Mm. And so delicious. It is, like I said, it's got that really kind of biscuity, uh, toasty flavor to it, but also this wonderful fresh lemon, a um, little bit of a, of a tart cherry flavor to it as well, but, but really more about these golden fruits. The next wine that we have is our sparkling rosé. This is also made in the Method Champenoise style, but in the case of this wine, we've broken the rules a little bit because rather than using Pinot Noir, the classic champagne grape, we're using Syrah. And the reason we're doing this is because the grapes for this are, are coming from Washington State. And in Washington State, you get this really beautiful, zippy acidity to the wines, which really suit our sparkling wines. With those Syrah grapes being used in this blend, you get this really nice, spicy, peppery note that comes through but still getting all that beautiful fruit. That Champenoise style giving you the creaminess, the toastiness, the richness, and all that complexity. Uh, this is a gorgeous wine. And this is also a wine with, with enough body that it could stand up to a lot of different foods. Our Luxe Sparkling, I would probably serve this as an aperitif before dinner or with lighter dishes. Seafood works really well. With this, believe it or not, this could stand up to a prime rib. There's a lot of body to this wine, a lot of complexity really yummy. Um, the next one I have here, totally different. This is Prosecco. And people ask me all the time what the difference is between Prosecco and Champagne. The prominent difference is, well, first of all, they're from different places. Prosecco always comes from Italy, northern Italy. It's made with a grape called Glera. And Prosecco was made in a really different style. So to make Prosecco, the wine only goes through a single fermentation. And it's done in a, in a pressurized tank. So all of the bubbles that come out of fermentation are trapped in that tank and it gets bottled right away. So no extended aging with yeast the way that champagne is made. Uh, instead, this is made really fast. The benefit of this is that you capture really beautiful, fresh, floral, fruity aromatics. Prosecco is extremely popular right now. Uh, so if you're going to a party and you want to bring a, a gift to your hostess, bring a bottle of Prosecco. It'll always be a winner. And that is classic Prosecco. It tastes like peaches and flowers. It's, it's kind of like a summer day in the middle of winter. It's a nice reminder that the warm weather is coming. So the last wine that we have to taste here today is our Blanc de Blanc. And this is an extremely popular wine for us at Cooper's Hawk. Blanc de Blanc means white from white. This is a term that is borrowed from Champagne. And in the Champagne region, two of the three predominant grapes that they use to make Champagne are red. And so you will find sparkling wines made in Champagne only from the red grapes. Those are called Blanc de Noir or only from Chardonnay. It's just called Blanc de Blanc. This is, in fact, 100% Chardonnay. So Blanc de Blanc sparkling wines are really lovely because using only these white grapes, you end up with a lot of these uh, really pretty pear and apple flavors, lemon. It's really bright and fresh. I love this. And this is not made in the Method Champenoise style. So that single fermentation allows this wine to retain a lot more fruitiness, a lot more freshness. Uh, so it's, it's really pretty and lively. And, and this is a great one to kick off your meal with as well. So really an awesome lineup of wine. Some of my favorite wines to drink at Cooper's Hawk, especially this time of year, uh, any time of year, who are we kidding? Uh, but uh, you know, there's, there's always this question about how to open sparkling wines. So I'm gonna give you a couple of tips on opening. 
When it comes to sparkling wines, there's a lot of pressure in these bottles. It's actually the same amount of pressure that's in a tire. So these can be dangerous. So never underestimate the power of these corks because they will go flying. Not every time, but sometimes when they do, it can be pretty dangerous. So the most important thing when opening these things is to treat that cork with a lot of care. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my thumb on top of the cork like this. I'm holding the bottle at a little bit of an angle and I'm gonna start on twisting the wire. It's always six turns. Loosen it up a little bit. And now I'm actually not gonna take that cage off because if I do, I'll be letting go of the cork. You notice my thumb is staying on the cork. I'm bring my hand around and now I'm just squeezing the cork itself. You notice I'm holding my bottle at an angle and I'm actually gonna start rocking the bottle. Just twist the bottle back and forth and loosen that cork. And now as it starts to push out, I'm actually pushing back. What I want is just a little hiss, or as some say, it's, it's the, a lover's sigh. Uh, so no big pop, not necessarily as festive, but a lot safer, and also a guarantee that you're not losing any wine out of the top of the bottle. And now you're good to go. So that's one way to open sparkling wine. There's another, and it involves a tool. So let's talk about sabering, because sabering, you know, there's absolutely no good reason to savor champagne or sparkling wine, except that it's really, really fun. Um, just a couple of things to mention about sabering. First of all, you want to make sure that your bottle is really cold. And so if your sparkling wine is, is warm or shaken, that thing is just going to blow up everywhere. So keep it nice and cold. I even like to put it neck down in an ice bucket uh, before I start to make sure that it's really nice and cold. Um, some other things about, about sabering is that you got to make sure you're being safe because when you're opening this thing, the whole top of the bottle is going to go flying off, glass, cork and all, in one piece. It is totally safe. So what's going to happen is that the, the bottle is literally going to shear off. The glass is going to break off. And uh, when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you're not aiming this at anybody. Like I said before, these corks are under, are under a lot of pressure and that thing is going to go flying. So don't aim it at anybody, don't, don't saber off of a roof, um, just be really careful. So the next thing about sabering is that there's a technique to this. So there are a couple of seams on the bottle. There's a seam that runs up the side here, and there's, a, there's basically another weak point around the neck of that bottle. And it's where that line and that neck meet that you're going to be aiming for. So what we're going to do, I'm gonna loosen the cage in this case as well, so we're not hitting at the wire, but what we're going to do is take this knife. I'm not chopping the bottle. What I'm going to do is slide it up the top of the bottle and just hit it right at that weak spot. Uh, and it, it can take a couple of tries, um, but you, if you hit it right on that spot, what will happen is that the whole neck will just snap off. Uh, it's an amazing party trick. So I'm going to loosen that cage, again, just so I'm not hacking away at that. And... Uh, Loosen that away from the, the neck. And now. Voila! That is really fun. And yeah, some goes flying, but that's all part of the fun. So now I know I'm, I'm dealing with broken glass here, but it's totally safe. All that sparkling wine that gushed out is gonna knock away any loose piece of glass, which there really isn't any. You can see on the top of that, it's totally a clean, fresh break. And you know what else it is? Delicious. Cheers. <laughs>